So when I started my vegan dim sum series, there were so many of you that requested Chinese Hong Kong egg tarts. And of course I had done the Portuguese version and the Hong Kong version early on, but I used eggs. And so the reason it has taken a little longer is because, well, when you call something egg tarts and you can't use egg, it becomes a little bit more difficult. So um, I wanted to make sure that the recipe was right, but that everybody could also get access to the ingredients that I was using. I'm really excited to show you guys this recipe and hopefully you guys will like it. So um, let's head over to the kitchen and then let's get started. Okay, so I'm gonna start off by showing you guys how to put together the egg tart shells first. Now, if you guys didn't see a while back, I did the full video, and basically it consists of um, laminating the oil layer with the water layer. And um, I actually put the recipes down below for both of them. It's like shortening, water, and flour, and it's just really in different proportions. And you can see, I put actually both of these guys in the freezer. The water layer, I defrosted for about 30 minutes before uh, using this, but even putting it into the freezer, you can see how soft they are, especially that oil layer, which which has a ton of shortening in it. So just be sure to catch the video. So this is straight from the freezer and um, I'm using cake flour to basically dust out my bench. And you want a fair amount of flour because again, uh, this dough starts off pretty darn soft. Like it's almost all fat. So it's bound to stick to your rolling pin and it's bound to stick to your table as well. So make sure to kind of have ample amounts. So you can see like even from the freezer, it gets really soft almost immediately. You can see that with the rolling pin. So I'm just gonna push that together because again it's essentially all fat. Okay, so now I'm gonna put that water layer right on top of the fat layer, and I'm just using my rolling pin because it is kind of like from the freezer, it's still a little bit hard. I'm just gonna kind of like gently smush it down. So once you guys get the dough to kind of a similar length, you want to just use a bench scraper and then you kind of divide the sections up into four and then you fold them uh, alongside one another. And the bench scraper is really good because it minimizes the time that you use your hands to touch the dough because you do want the dough to stay nice and cold and that way the layers kind of stay. So you can see I flipped the dough about 90 degrees and I'm using the same technique to use the rolling pin to kind of smush it down a little bit and then to roll it out into a layer. So there's no precise thickness, but once again, you just wanna fold it down into the fours again. So one on each side, and then you're just going to fold it in half again. And when the dough starts coming together is when I start worrying about how much flour it is. So at this stage, you can just take a brush and then brush off any excess flour. So basically I'm gonna do these steps again for a total of five times. I think in my original video I did it about three to four, but I think I like more layers, but um, definitely remember that if this dough gets too soft, the layers are going to just kind of mush together. So just remember to bring it like back and forth into the freezer if you happen to be working in a really warm kitchen. So after you guys reach round five, and I do have to say the dough gets a lot easier to work with the more you work with it, um, you basically wanna put it into a plastic wrap and then stick it into the freezer for about 15 minutes because um, you want to make sure that the dough is nice and cool before you do that final rollout and um, the cutouts for the uh, egg tart shells. So 15 minutes later and this dough is ready to go. You basically wanna roll it out to, I would say about like a quarter of an inch, maybe just a little bit less and um, just kinda do it carefully so that you don't disturb the layers too much. So you guys can basically see the technique that I'm using. I'm gonna just roll it out little by little and then afterwards I do a quarter turn and just kind of like make sure that the bottom is not sticking to the bench. So when you do get it to the desired thickness, I do one last brush around just to make sure I don't have any excess flour. And then I wanna take a cutter and have that diameter be, oh, I would say about a half an inch uh, wider than my actual egg tarts diameter, cause that's gonna really help later for when you push the edges through. So um, I like it also to be fluted because it makes the edges just a little bit more pretty. And I'm just gonna cut it out right now and then um, put it into each egg tart shell.
So I just wanted to show you a close-up of how all of these guys look. Can you see all of the different layers? Like when you bake them, it's going to be amazing. So basically what you're gonna do right now is um, you're going to kind of use your finger and then press the edges. Make sure that the dough hits all of the edges and it's okay to kind of thin out the bottoms and the sides. It's just the, the part that you want to really see and to really stick out is kind of that edge. So you just wanna make sure that the dough goes over just a little bit over the edges of the tart pan. So this is how these guys end up looking and they go into an oven for uh, at 350 degrees for 20 minutes. Now we're gonna pre-bake these pie shells, but you know, traditionally if you're making just you know a normal egg tart with eggs, you'd actually fill this up with the custard first and then bake it all together. So here it is all baked up and you guys just wanna make sure that it's kind of like that light golden brown color and you can see all of the layers have kind of separated even more. So I'm just unmolding it and getting it out of the pan before I start filling it. So just let those guys completely cool and then while you do that, you can start working on the fun part which is the custard center. So uh, two parts, I have some sugar, I have some agar and then I'm just gonna melt that all over uh, with some water first and then put that over uh, to a boiler. So it's really interesting when you can't really use eggs. So the way that I'm gonna try to mimic that texture is half with agar and then half with a custard powder that contains cornstarch. So it's gonna kind of provide that like jiggliness and then while the agar kind of provides that like nice bite. So now I'm working on the custard portion. It's gonna be three quarters of a cup of coconut milk along with three quarters of a teaspoon of custard powder. And again, the reason I'm using custard powder, it's flavor, it's also going to provide that nice yellow color and a little bit of cornstarch. And I tend to use the Lion's custard powder because one, it's unsweetened and also um, a lot of the Asian recipe calls for that, but I know that there are kind of other brands uh, as well. So you just have to adjust for sweetness if it happens to be sweetened. So I'm just mixing that all together because the custard powder does have a tendency to clump up. So you just wanna make sure that everything is um, nice and smooth before you add it to the hot agar mixture, which is just coming to a boil. And you just wanna make sure that all of the agar is dissolved first. And then um, you're just gonna put that custard mixture in and then mix it. So I would recommend about on medium heat and to kind of slowly bring it to a boil versus uh, being kind of all crazy about it. So once the mixture comes to a boil, I really only cook it for about another minute. Um, it will thicken up, but it'll even thicken up a little bit more while it's in the refrigerator. So uh, after that, I just turn off the heat and then I cool it just a little bit before I'm going to be pouring it into the shells. So you guys can see that I'm putting the shells back into the tins. It's just sometimes there could be like a hole in the pastry and I don't want this liquid to leak through. So I'm just putting it in one of the cups with spouts because it makes it a lot easier to pour. Um, something that I think people might ask is like, sometimes you'll see uh, the egg tarts have a super bright yellow color and it's actually because they typically in the bakeries, they put a little bit of food coloring in. You guys can actually uh, put some annatto seeds in and then kind of that'll bring up the yellow flavor a little bit more naturally or you can just put in you know, a couple drops of food coloring at this stage. So this is how these guys look. I'm actually gonna put them into the refrigerator just to set the cornstarch, but because there is agar in there, it will actually set up even if you don't put it into the refrigerator, but it really only needs about an hour or so. So you guys can see that this is actually a little bit more yellow. I actually ended up mixing some annatto seeds and then heating it with a little bit of coconut oil and then just brushing it up top. And it's really purely for photography reasons. I think it just looks prettier that way. You guys definitely don't really have to. It's not going to affect the flavor at all. So you can see how amazing these guys look. I mean, just the pastry alone, it's gonna be uber flaky and it's gonna be like a little bit like puff pastry, only not as dry. And um, it's really the best recipe that I've tried for egg tart shells. You just, you have to put in a little bit of work, but afterwards it pays off so well. It's nice because the texture is kind of jiggly, just like the centers of the egg tarts as well. So it's actually, um, it's, it's quite a good substitute. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this recipe. I know that you guys asked for it. Um, as usual, if you want to see more recipes like this, remember to hit that like and subscribe button, and I will see you guys again next time. Bye!